first conference game of this SEC season is just moments away on a glorious late summer afternoon in Lexington, Kentucky, where the Wildcats and their fans are ready to host Shane Beamer and the South Carolina Gamecocks, fresh off a narrow win in their season opener against Old Dominion. That was the first career start for quarterback Lenore Sellers. Today, a much tougher test on the road in the SEC. Kentucky's quarterback, Brock Vandegrift, is also making his second career start. The Georgia transfer established himself as a dual threat in their opening win here at Kroger Field last week against Southern Miss. You're watching the SEC on ABC, presented by Burger King. And history will be made today here in Lexington as this is the first conference game in the new 16-team Southeastern Conference as South Carolina and Kentucky go head-to-head -head for the 37th time. They've met every year since 1992. Sean McDonough, Greg McElroy, and Molly McGrath. Delighted to have you with us on this spectacular day. Bright blue skies overhead. It feels like fall. The temperature right around 70 degrees. South Carolina won the toss and deferred. Kentucky elected to take the opening kickoff. And Barryon Brown brought it back to the 19-yard line for a 19-yard return. So here comes Brock Vandegrift. The transfer from Georgia, from Bogart, Georgia, small town of just more than a thousand, about 20 minutes drive away from Athens, Georgia, where he played the last three years as a backup for the Georgia Bulldogs behind Stetson Bennett and Carson Beck. Good size, strong, and tough as he demonstrated from the outset of that win against the Golden Eagles of Southern Miss. Last Saturday, they handed off to Demi Sumo Karngbe, and he got a yard, tackled by Bam Martin Scott, part of a feisty South Carolina defense that Craig was terrific in the win against Old Dominion. Yeah, very important today for Kentucky to stay on schedule. South Carolina, when you get in the obvious passing situations, excellent edge rushers. The freshman Dylan Stewart took over the game last week, and the transfer from Georgia Tech, Kyle Kanar, were really, really impactful. Sumo Karnbe again, and he's out to the 31 with an 11-yard gain and a first down. That's the biggest question for this Kentucky offense, trying to replace the 1100-yard 11 11 rusher from a year ago, Ray Davis. And do so right now with Demi Sumo Karnbe, who spent most of his time last year playing slot receiver, and Chip Traynor is supposed to be the guy transferred from Ohio State. He's been banged up with a broken hand. I don't think they'll have him back for several more weeks. Sumo Karnbe out to the 36. So the new offensive coordinator, Bush Hamden, making it a point to try to establish the run. There's Hamden, the OC at Boise State last year. And he has their backup quarterback, Gavin Wimsat, in the game now, a transfer from Rutgers. And he'll line up that quarterback, and Vandegrift is still on the field. Lined up to the left of Wimsat. They fake the handoff on the jet sweep, and Wimsat's ahead to the 39-yard line, about two yards short of the first down. Wimsat goes back out. Wimsat will be sprinkled in throughout the game plan. He's one of the most explosive players on their team with the ball in their hands. So with him being a little thin at running back, They'll utilize him as a Wildcat quarterback. Third down and three for Kentucky. Vandegrift in trouble and forced to throw it away. He was pressured by Taka Hemingway. Really good rush up front there by Tonka Hemingway. It looked like had Vandegrift had a chance to move upfield just ever so slightly, could have hit Dane Key on a little bit of a corner route, which would have been a conversion, but anticipating man coverage right there and zone coverage called by Clayton White, the defensive coordinator, they just didn't guess right as the OC, Bush Hampton, 
settled for an incomplete. Wilson Berry on the punt. 26 year old from Australia punting into a pretty stiff wind. And that helped knock down the ball at the 24 yard line. Fair catch made by Jalen Kilgore of a 39 yard punt. South Carolina on offense for the first time with the quarterback Lenoris Sellers, redshirt freshman from Florence, South Carolina. Unimpressive passing the ball last week, but he did carry 22 times for 68 yards. Said he was a little out of sorts, understandable in his first career start. Tends to let it rip a bit more today. They start on the ground with the transfer from Arkansas. Rocket Sanders for a two-yard gain here are today's impact players presented by the Home Depot. You know, in South Carolina, got to take the pressure off their young quarterback with their running back, Rocket Sanders. Played a ton of football, and he's going against the defensive tackle in Deion Walker, who at 340 pounds is enormous in the middle of that Kentucky defense. One of the best defensive linemen in the country at 6'8", 340. Swing pass outside to Michael Smith. There's a flag down at the 31 yard line just a couple of yards from where the play ended a yard short of the line to gain David Smith is leading this Southeastern Conference officiating crew JQ Hardaway wiped out a seven yard gain. And this was a big point of emphasis for South Carolina. The receivers last week on the perimeter did not do a good job blocking. And Campbell, first opportunity working against Hardaway, who had nearly 200 pounds, almost slips inside. Campbell grabs him, and that was an obvious call by the official. Part of the very new wide receiver group for South Carolina. A short set for Sellers. He's in trouble. Managed to stay on his feet and throw it. An incomplete pass. It saved a sack. And you see how powerfully built Sellers is at 242 and very thick in the lower body. And this was a nice game on the right side between the linebacker and the defensive end. But big number zero, Deion Walker, slips right underneath the freshman Josiah Thompson, left tackle. And very dangerous there by Lenora Sellers. Could have very easily resulted in a fumble or an interception. Well, it's third down and 18. Out of the gun, Sellers. High pass and a good catch by the crosser, Jared Brown. And he scampers out of bounds, well short of the first down. It's a nine yard gain. But South Carolina will punt. After a three and out of their first possession. And their punter is Kai Kroger, fifth year as their starting punter. Jamori Macklin is back deep, a transfer from North Texas. Back pedals and muffs the punt and gets on it inside the 20. Well, Kentucky on offense for the second time from its 19. Here's Molly McGrath. Well, Sean, South Carolina head coach Shane Beamer told us he coaches his veteran defense differently than his young offense. He likes to make them mad, push their buttons to give them a bit of an edge. So all week long in pregame, he was telling them in this matchup, everyone thinks of you guys as JV. That team in the blue is varsity. There are NFL scouts here. They're all here to watch big number zero in blue, referencing Deion Walker and challenging Debo Williams. He said no one's here to watch you play. You're JV. you got to prove them wrong. And you can tell these players are chirping to each other that they're JV. They're rallying around this message in this game, guys. Trying to beat Kentucky for the third year in a row. They won 17 to 14 last year over the Wildcats in Columbia. Tough run on first down. Again, it's Demi Sumo Carnbe for about nine. The offensive line so far from Kentucky really doing a good job of establishing the line of scrimmage. It's an elite pass rushing unit, but they have yet to be challenged against the run. And so far, that's been the emphasis from Kentucky's offense. The 53 yard putt by Kroger forced Kentucky to start inside the 20. 
On second and very short, the handoff to Barry on Brown, and he's buried. Jalen Kilgore up from the secondary to drop that for a seven yard loss. And he's working against number 84, Josh Caddis, who missed last week with a hamstring injury, and Kilgore. The size that they have at nickel makes them extremely versatile defensively, and he's able to drop Brown behind the sticks. What a great play. He's a sophomore from Eatonton, Georgia, was a freshman All-American last year. On third down and eight, Brock Vandegrift. High throw, a good catch, but a very short game to Jamori Macklin. Just a two-yard pickup. Or Macklin was at North Texas last year, played a couple of seasons before that at Missouri, where his wide receiver coach was Bush Hamden, who's now the offensive coordinator here at Kentucky. Well, Wilson buried a punt again into the breeze. He saw the muff punt on the last punt. It is windy, and there is a very bright sky here today. Could be tough handling punts. Went into the wind is not going very far. Took a good bounce for Barry, and it's down to the 39 yard line. Just a 38 yard punt, much of it on the bounce. No score, six minutes gone by in Lexington. Back at Kroger Field, it is the 36th meeting all time between these two teams. South Carolina with the all-time edge, largely because of that dominance in the early part of this century. And they won 13 out of 14. They've won the last two. The Mark Stoops in Kentucky's won seven of the last 10 meetings. They played every year since 1992 when South Carolina joined the conference. First and 10 for the Gamecocks and a beautiful throw through a lot of traffic. Sellers on target to Jared Brown, who fought hard to get to the 40 for a first down, a 21-yard gain on a beautiful throw. And a great throw by Sellers. I mean, Jamon Dumas Johnson drifts right out underneath it, tries to get his right hand up to tip it, touches it barely, but it doesn't affect the accuracy. Just an excellent throw by the freshman. Sellers takes off running. It's 22 carries last week against Old Dominion, the most in a game by a South Carolina quarterback since 2013, when Connor Shaw carried 22 times against Clemson. They get to the line quickly. Jared Brown again, a lot of running room as he turned the corner. But he gets yanked out inside the 25-yard line. That's 12 more. And another first down for Carolina. And again, they'll keep the pace. This has to be the plan for offensive coordinator Dow Loggins. He needs to continue to work sideline to sideline and away from the big bodies in the middle. Sellers rolls to his left, has a wide open receiver, and a touchdown. Mazio Bennett Jr., a 24 yard score. The true freshman with just his third career catch. He had two last week against ODU, and now he has his first career touchdown. And just a miscommunication in the back end of Kentucky. The outside corner, number six, JQ Hardaway, stayed on the post of the inside, which allowed the wide receiver from the slot, Bennett, wide open on the corner and an easy throw and a terrific drive there by the Gamecocks. And the extra point up and good by the new place kicker, Alex Herrera, new to the starting job. He's been in the program for six years. The first touchdown catch for the freshman from Greenville, South Carolina, Mazio Bennett. And the first touchdown pass of this season for Lenoris Sellers. He did throw a couple in very limited action last year as a freshman before he redshirted. He played in three games last year, threw four passes, and two of them went for touchdowns. Playing behind Spencer Rattler now in the NFL. There's more college football action after our game tonight right here on ABC. At 7.30, number 14, Tennessee, and number 24, NC State in the Dukes-Mayo Classic neutral site game.
at Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte. How about Tennessee last week? Open with a 69 to 3 win against Chattanooga. NC State defeated Western Carolina. It was absolutely a clinic by Tennessee. <laughs> and North NC State, let's not sleep on them, though. Very aggressive defense that Tony Gibson runs going against Nico Iamaleava, who's got all the talent in the world, but has never seen this level of aggression from the opposing defense. So that'll be a fascinating cat and mouse game. Marion Brown back for the kickoff. Four career kickoff returns for touchdowns, tied for the all-time conference record with six others. And Alex Herrera will kick off. Ball being held because of the gusty wind. End over end, it is returnable for Brown. And again, good coverage by South Carolina, though somehow Brown escaped when it looked like they were going to smother him inside the 20. He managed to make it out near the 25 yard line. Mazio Bennett, the touchdown. Now the Carolina defense on the field. Midway through this first quarter. Brock Vandegriff opens in the pistol with Jason Patterson, the running back. He's a freshman. And he gets the carry. What a long way. The ball came out. And it's recovered by Kentucky's Dane Key. Five yard gain. Patterson went a long way across the line of scrimmage before there was any contact, but once there was some, he lost the football. It looked like as he was going down to the ground, that right elbow in contact with the ground is actually what dislodged the football. Kentucky's had some success running it early in this game. With Demi Sumo Karngbe, who is the running back now, to the left of Brock Vandegriff. Vandegriff, one for two, passing, throws a deep ball and single coverage, and it is caught. The officials conferring is it inbounds, and it is at the 39 yard line. Dane Key the catch with O'Donnell Fortune right there. How about the concentration by Key running out of room? Does he get the left foot down? He does. Does he have possession? Does he secure it? Looks like he does, and Kentucky will go fast. And it's out wide and very well defended. Fred Ferrier, the catch, transfer from UAB, but right there was O'Donnell Fortune. And we welcome our ABC audience to Kroger Field in Lexington, Kentucky. It's the SEC on ABC on a spectacular day here on the Bluegrass. South Carolina and Kentucky in the first conference game of the year in the SEC. And South Carolina leads 7 to nothing. And the Gamecocks have a sack of Brock Vandegriff back at the Kentucky 48. It's T.J. Sanders part of the middle of that defense. And T.J. Sanders just right around the left guard, Jagger Burton, engages immediately, a little swim move, and Vandegrift can do nothing with it as he's dropped for a big loss. Eight-yard loss. South Carolina had five sacks in its win against Old Dominion last week and four takeaways. It was the defense that led them to victory 23-19 against the Monarchs. Gerald Mincy, the injured player. The SEC on ABC presented by Burger King. From Kroger Field in Lexington, Kentucky, where it feels like fall. Temperatures around 90 here yesterday. We had a brief thunderstorm last evening. Really dropped the temperatures. Gusty winds. Brock Vandegriff and Kentucky heading into the breeze here in the first quarter. He's surrounded, lost the football. And Carolina appears to have it. Kyle Kennard knocked the ball out. And it was recovered by Kentucky by Brock Vandegrift, despite the celebrating of the Gamecocks. Kentucky did get it back, but they'll have to punt. And on the right side, Dylan Stewart applying the pressure, and Kennard coming around to the backside. Both 
arriving at Vandegrift at the exact same time to see who exactly knocked it free was tough to tell. But just those edge rushers they took over the game last week can do it again today. They've become a dynamic duo. They each had a strip sack that led to a score for South Carolina last week, and they shared the SEC Defensive Lineman of the Week award. Wilson Berry's third punt, a good one. It'll be down inside the 10 yard line. 47 yard punt. For those of you just joining us on ABC, South Carolina punted on its first possession, then a nifty drive on the second possession, just four plays to go 61 yards. Lenoris Sellers to Mazio Bennett Jr., true freshman, his second game, his first career touchdown reception from 24 yards out. It was a really impressive adjustment by the offense for South Carolina. Started out trying to test things up the middle against Kentucky and didn't find any success in their first drive. So in the second drive, started to work sideline to sideline, get those big bodies moving, and they found a lot of success, not just through the air, but also on the ground. That drive was much more impressive than anything they put together on offense against Old Dominion last week. They had just 305 yards of offense. Raheem Sanders, the ball carrier. Deion Walker, the stop after a gain of one. Here's Molly McGrath. Well, Sean, you guys mentioned South Carolina's offense going sideline to sideline. Their receivers coach, Mike Fury, called the receivers together, talked about Kentucky's corner, saying they're trying to cut everything to take away the perimeter. We have to limit the penetration of their cuts. He then showed examples on the iPad, and they're doing everything they can to open up the passing game on the perimeter, guys. The handoff to Rocket Sanders, the transfer from Arkansas. They're hoping he'll give their offense a much needed boost. Walker was in on the tackle. Last season, South Carolina was the worst rushing team in the SEC at just 85 yards per game. Difficult spot, too, for the young quarterback. Backed up situation inside his own 10 against an excellent pass rush. Keep an eye on number 13, J.J. Weaver. He's be working on the right side. And then on the left, you'll have number 42, Tyree Spearby, working against the true freshman left tackle, Josiah Thompson. Sellers was three out of three on the touchdown drive of the last possession. On third down and nine, forced to retreat. There's whistles and flags. Timeout, South Carolina. I got a timeout before the flag's thrown or delay a game. Shane Beamer's team on the road in the SEC opener. Not only for these two teams, but for the conference. This is the first conference game of this season. History we made here today, as we said earlier first game in the 16 team conference and we talked to both coaches yesterday Greg about this one in particular and they both admitted you know this is a very important game if you're going to have the kind of season both teams hope to have this is a game you have to win it's massive because the wins frankly are extremely hard to come by I mean to expect to beat a Georgia or a Texas that those are going to be tall orders so to beat the teams that are kind of in the same tier as you which these two teams are trying to be those teams that can beat them groups that can kind of punch up so this is a massive game at home for both these teams if they want to get to an 8-9 potentially a 10 win season obviously it's a tall order but it starts today against a team that you can handle and match up against go out of the timeout third down and nine Sanders moves back onto the right hip of the red shirt freshman Lenore Sellers he dodges the rush a couple times. There's a flag down. The catch is made for a first down if it stands out at the 27-yard line. Well, there is a flag down back in the end zone. It's a 17-yard gain to Andrevis Jacobs, the Florida State transfer. Holding number 74. Based on where that flag was thrown, it had to be very close to being in the end zone as well. It's on the true freshman, Josiah Thompson. He's working against Trey Ripka. Ripka beats him upfield, and Thompson, the freshman, has to grab him around the neck, which results in 
the holding penalty and wipes out the converted first down. But it looks like he was just on the outside of the end zone and careful a yard or two away from potentially being a safety. Tough task for Josiah Thompson. The coaches, Dow Loggins, Corday said they'll try to get him some help today. His first conference game on the road against a team that has some power and speed up front. Short set, quick throw, caught. Nazio Bennett ran into a pile at the 12 yard line. Zion Childress leading away for the Kentucky defense. And it'll be a South Carolina punt. For Kai Kroger, remember this is Beamer ball. Shane Beamer chip off the old block his dad Frank Hall of Fame coach at Virginia Tech known for great special teams which he coached himself and Shane very involved in the Carolina special teams. They ran a fake punt last week they went for a touchdown but was called back for a penalty. Good boot with the win by Kroger. And Jamori Macklin. Brought it back to the 44 yard line. 57 yard punt, eight yard return. Brock Vandegrift from Bogart, Georgia, he told us about a 20 minute drive from Athens and the University of Georgia, very small town. He was highly recruited out of Prince Avenue Christian School, where he played for his dad. Sat three years at Georgia, two behind Stetson Bennett. They won a pair of national championships last year behind. Carson Beck and when Beck decided to return for another year Brock and his dad Greg decided it was time for Vandergriff to go someplace where he could play Greg was Brock's high school coach at Prince Avenue Christian School Brock in trouble and throws it away Kari Swain came on a corner blitz they're looking for a grounding call on the South Carolina sideline and they're going to get it. Flag just dropped by the referee, David Smith. And it doesn't look like Vandegrift ever gets outside the tackle box. He just retreats vertically along that right hash. Throws it with not really any receiver in the area. And a good job there by the officials talking about it, having that communication, and properly throwing the flag. Gerald Mincy has not returned at right tackle after he was helped off. Anthony Crease, number 78, is in at tackle. For the big blue wall, the Kentucky offensive line hasn't been up to its usual standards in the last couple of years. They're hoping and they think the line play will be better, but so far they've had trouble. And Vandegrift has been scampering all over the place trying to get away. He could not escape Debo Williams. And clearly, uh, he is rattled already, Greg, and understandably by the constant pressure from South Carolina. And they tried to call a quarterback draw. This actually hurt South Carolina on a 44-yard gain last week for a touchdown. This time, Debo Williams plays it perfectly and drops Vandergriff right around the line of scrimmage to set up another third and long for Kentucky. Third and 23, a minute and a half to go first quarter. 7-0 Gamecocks. Vandegrift stumbles as he tries to get away. And they had him around the legs as he threw it again. Dylan Stewart, the true freshman who has already established himself as a force out of Washington, D.C. A newcomer for Clayton White, the defensive coordinator. All right, you have three different guys right here that are all trying to block a true freshman. He works through the triple team, basically, and still somehow finds a way to apply the pressure. I mean, that is absolutely ridiculous. I know the starting right tackle is out, but still, they're trying to help him, and yet it still doesn't matter against the guy in his second college game. Wilson Berry's fourth punt of the quarter, and he's had to be dealing with the gusty wind Off another good punt, Juju McDowell, the fair catch near the 30-yard line, 42-yard punt. There's the Taco Bell Live Moss student section all season long. Students 
across the country are competing to be the Taco Bell Live Moss Student Section of the Year. Download the Taco Bell app to learn more. The weather is perfect. If you like perfect, you're going <laughs> to like the weather today. If you don't like perfect, this is not the place to be. Right. When the sky is the same color as the home team's uniforms, you just feel like you're at home, right? I mean, it's mm -hmm. just absolutely perfect here in Lexington. Robbie Ashford, the backup quarterback, comes in for Lenora Sellers. He handed it off to Juju McDowell. Ashford is a transfer. He's been around a couple of years at Oregon. The last couple of years at Auburn, where he made two starts, and Lenora Sellers is heading to the South Carolina locker room. You have to wonder what's going on with Lenora Sellers. There really wasn't a whole lot, felt like on the last drive, that would lead to him having to head to the locker room. You have an experience back with an Ashford in there. They handed it off. A lot of traffic here where the handoff was executed. Avon Rainer made the tackle on Ashford. He started 10 games over the last two years at Auburn. One last year, nine in 2022. They went three and seven in those starts. And they don't have to snap it again. You saw Shane Beamer telling Ashford, don't bother to snap it again. Fifth-year senior from Hoover, Alabama, in your neck of the woods. <laughs> and, and a guy that's had some bright moments in his career, but has always been a little bit inconsistent. But his ceiling's pretty high, and it's great to have that experience off the bench. South Carolina on the road, leading 7 to nothing. It's the SEC on ABC. Coach, we saw your quarterback, Lenora Sellers, go back to the locker room. What's going on there? Yeah, he's got a bit of a lower body injury right now. They're going to go in there and take a look at it and, and uh, you know, see what he can do. He, uh, he feels like he can go. They just want to go in there and just take a look at it real quick. What's the plan if he can't play or he's hampered? We got a lot of confidence in Robbie Ashford. He started games in this conference, and, and uh, I've said it all along. We got two winning quarterbacks, and I love Robbie because Robbie's a competitor. When we were trying to bring in a quarterback in the offseason from the portal, there were a lot of quarterbacks that wanted to be promised the starting job here. And we told them we'd promise them the opportunity to compete. And a lot of those guys went other schools. Not Robbie Ashford. He came here because he's a freaking competitor, and we got a lot of faith in him. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you. And he got the call on third down and four. Got two, so it's fourth and two. And here's Kai Kroger. Neither team has converted a third down yet. South Carolina 0 for 3 now, and Kentucky's 0 for 4. Kroger's kick. And bounce out of bounds near the 10. Jamori Macklin started toward it and then jammed the brakes on. 53-yard punt. Tonight's featured college football games on ESPN Plus include Buffalo against number 9 Missouri. That's at 7. Also at 7, Samford against Florida. It's 7.30, Nickel State, number 18, LSU. Download the ESPN app or go to ESPNplus.com. Buffalo, under first-year head coach Pete Lembo, who the last few seasons was the terrific special teams coach at South Carolina. Yeah, I mean, I still think a couple of years ago, I, I voted for the assistant coach of the year. And I voted for Pete Lembo because I felt like he won two or three games for him back in 2022. Just an amazing coach. Royals Award going to the top assistant coach in the country. Danny Sumo Karn Bay carries for Kentucky. He slid out to the 18 yard line for a gain of eight. This is the fifth possession now for Kentucky. They're playing without Chip Trainum, the transfer from Ohio State. Should be their leading ball carrier when he gets healthy. He suffered a broken hand in the preseason. Uh, at least for a few more weeks. Sumo Karn Bay has the first down with a four yard gain. Bakari Swain made the tackle. It's really kind of been the story for Kentucky. Sumo Karn Bay has been very efficient so far today. He's averaging over six yards a carry, and Kentucky's kind of been their own worst enemy. They've kind of abandoned the run between the tackles way too soon. They've had some success with it. And they're allowing the speed of South Carolina put a lot of pressure on their passing game, which resulted in negative plays. Now the pistol, Brock Van de Griff, the quarterback. And Sumo Karnbe dropped for a loss. 
DeAndre Jules, the backup defensive tackle, the transfer from Pitt. Officially no gain on the play. This is an area for South Carolina where you talk to the defense coordinator, Clayton White. He said, man, we are so much deeper, really almost at every position, especially a defensive tackle with the addition of Jules and many others. They can go five, six deep at defensive tackle, which is a big upgrade from where they've been. Gavin Wims sat in the backup quarterback back in there again. He hands it off on the jet sweep to Anthony Brown Stevens. He's to the 30 yard line for an eight yard gain. We were told by Bush Hamner, the offense coordinator, we'd see a lot of Wims sat today. And for the most part, when he comes into the game, Vandegrift will stay on the field. They just with the it. Injury to Chip Trainum, they're just a little thin at running back. So trying to distribute the touches, and Wimsat's one of the best players on their team with the ball in his hand. So he's going to get plenty of opportunities as a Wildcat quarterback. Josh Caddis, the tight end, the motion man. Sumo Karnbe stacked up on third down and two. He got one. It'll be fourth and one. And Mark Stoops with a decision to make. And he's leaving the offense on the field. Gilbert Edmond made the tackle. So they're going to go for it on their own 31, down 7 to nothing early in the second quarter. Man, really aggressive here, too, especially against an offense that really struggled last week. Seems like a bold call. And they do snap it. Vandergriff's in trouble. He is trying to push his way to the line. It didn't look like he got there. He's a big, strong guy at 6'3", 217. The Gamecocks convinced they stopped him, and it certainly looks like they did. They did. They don't even need a measurement. First down, South Carolina. The Shane Beamer's defense gets the ball back on downs. And the two defensive tackles, number 91, Hemingway, and 95, Huntley, they just get underneath the lower guys along the interior of the offensive line. And, and I understand being aggressive in plus territory, but this to me makes very little sense. Defense has played pretty well. Beamer loves what he just saw from his defensive front. You have a backup quarterback in the game for South Carolina. Just can't be on board with going for it in your own end right now and now giving them the short field. Certainly the Gamecocks were looking for the keeper for Vandergriff. They had a big pile right over the center and guards. The veteran offensive line on both sides. South Carolina's O-line has 154 combined college starts. Robbie Ashford still the quarterback. Rocket Sanders tried to bounce it outside and could not get there. Good tackle in space by Zion Childress, the senior from Houston, a transfer from Texas State where he played a couple of years. And Lenora Sellers is back on the field. Hopefully he'll be all right. It doesn't look as though he's running with any limitations whatsoever. He kind of pointed to the right side, right hip area when he went off the field initially. So hopefully everything checked out for the quarterback. Ashford on a quarterback delay. Looked like a design run for him. And it's effective. He's inside the 15. And it's a first down for South Carolina. This is really nicely designed. Just a little counter action between the left guard pulling and the tight end number 87, Brady Hunt, who gets a kick out as well up second level. And really strong run there by Ashford, who refuses to go down as inside the red zone. Robbie 6'2", 229, fifth year senior. 21 years old, will turn 22 next month. He gave it to Raheem Sanders, and Childress made another tackle, playing in his 52nd career game, most on the Wildcat team. Very experienced defense under defense coordinator Brad White. And in the red zone, this is where they've really been good over the years. They're a bend, don't break group. And in the red zone, they've been highly efficient. Last year, not as much, so looking for improvement here in 24. Ashford has completed his only pass attempt this afternoon on in relief of Lenora Sellers. Five receivers, three to his left. He looked to the left, he pulled it down quickly, then slipped as he tried to take off running. 
No gain on the play. Third down and 12. They are in field goal range. Sellers looks like he's able to return, starting to warm up on the sideline. Big here, key here for Robbie Ashford. Played a ton of football, highly experienced player. You cannot take a sack. You're already inside field goal range. Any negative yardage could make it very difficult going into the win for your field goal kicker. Another design run for Ashford, trying to get outside. He's tackled from behind, well short of the first down. Tyrese Fearbury, sophomore linebacker from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, made the tackle. And the field goal team will come out. Alex Herrera, in his sixth year in the program, waited five years to get his chance behind Mitch Jeter the last few years. And had a very nice debut, made three out of four. His only miss was from 48. They were his first career field goal attempts in his sixth year in the program. They rush a man on late. And Kentucky needs to be given time to substitute as well. And now I believe Shane Beamer wants a timeout after this mess. South Carolina, they're second. Eight ten to go, second quarter. Beamer and the Gamecocks leading at Kentucky, 7-0. Some alert coaching by Mark Stoops and his staff force South Carolina to use a timeout. And now a 29-yard attempt upcoming for Herrera. In the Shane Beamer era, field goal kickers for South Carolina have made 42 out of 46. That's 91.3% best in the SEC in that span. Ty Kroger is the holder. And Herrera picks up where Mitch Jader left off. They continue to knock him through the uprights. This was just a massive moment a second ago. South Carolina, they didn't have enough guys on the field, so they run a guy on late with eight seconds remaining, which allows Kentucky the opportunity to substitute. You see the umpire and the officials stop things five, four, three. Kentucky then decides, hey, we are going to substitute as well. So you got to give tremendous credit at the bottom of the screen. You're going to see Mark Stoops, who's down in this direction. You see him. He tells his player to run on and points as he's running on to the play clock and goes straight to the official and say this. He essentially forced because of the substitution error by South Carolina. He forced Shane Beamer to call timeout, which was a great example of gamesmanship. Yeah, ordinarily, he wouldn't substitute on that unit, but he knew if they just sent a player on with the play clock that low, South Carolina was going to have to use the timeout to take the delay penalty. But it is three points for Carolina. And a much better looking offense for the Gamecocks than they put on the field last week against Old Dominion. And they had just 288 yards of total offense. And 109 so far here today. But again, score set up on a short field by the defense on the turnover on downs. Demi Sumo Karnbe. Now to the 30-yard line, here's Molly McGrath. Well, Sean, I'm told South Carolina quarterback Lenora Sellers will return with a right leg injury. They stretched and worked out that leg back in the locker room, and we saw him jog back onto the sideline. He was immediately given his helmet. He told teammates, I'm good to go. He's been stretching, warming up on the sideline. You can tell he's eager to get back in the game, guys. And he kind of points as he's walking off the field to his right hip kind of indicated to Shane Beaver that, that was the issue. So glad to see everything checked out, and he'll be all right and able to return. That's a lot of leg on which to have an injury. <laughs> he squats 590 pounds. Sumo Karnbe breaking tackles. He's had some good runs. Not going to be an explosive home run threat, but if he can keep giving them eight or nine with regularity, they'll take it. And it looked like as he was going through the hole, he might have gotten away with a face mask by Bam Martin Scott, whose right hand was up into the grill of Sumo Karnbe. Got away with one there. 
Nine yard gain out of the pistol. They stick with Sumo Karn Bay, senior from Willingboro, New Jersey, started his career at North Carolina State, played a couple of years there, and is now in his second season here in Lexington. Primarily played slot receiver last year because they were a little inconsistent at times, banged up. They brought in Chip Trainum to be the bell cow and Sumo Karn Bay to be the change of pace guy, but now he's been thrust into the role and his answer today. Big shoes to fill. They've had a lot of terrific running backs here under Mark Stoops, including Ray Davis last year. Quick hitter, Demi Sumo Karn Bay, ran into Bam Martin Scott in a six name collision. <laughs> Nine yard gain. They have not been the Big comeback team since 2020 when trailing by 10 or more. One and 18. The only win against Louisville in 2023. And one of the highlights of the Stoops era, they've defeated their in state rivals, the Cardinals, five years in a row. Jason Patterson, the freshman, banged out of bounds by Nick Eamon Worry, the free safety. Got another quality gain on the run. Eight yards. Kentucky continues to have some success running the football. They just got to avoid those big negative plays, which has really kind of disrupted the rhythm of the offense. But here on the second and short, I might go big play action, see if I can't throw it over the top in an aggressive safety. They're having a lot of trouble blocking when they try to pass, so they're sticking with the run, and it's working. Patterson. The freshman from Sneeds, Florida, a three-yard gain and a first down. He led the state of Florida in rushing as a junior, more than 2,700 yards rushing, and that's a state packed with talent. Just five passing yards for the Wildcats. Or five attempts, rather, for 30 passing yards. Getting used to these very handsome new graphics on the SEC on ABC. Patterson carries again to the 29 yard line. Six yard gain. The crowd likes what they see on this drive. Very efficient drive being called here by Bush Hamden, the new offensive coordinator. Sumo Kong Bay. Bush Hamden has a lot of faith in him, but he's not really going to be the feature back like they've had here. The Benny Snells and Chris Rodriguez, Lynn Bowden, and Boone Williams, among others. But he's more than capable of being an effective SEC player, and he has 67 yards rushing on 12 carries today. Yeah, he's not going to be a guy that's ever going to average 200, 220, like Ray Davis did at his time in both Vanderbilt and Kentucky, but he's very capable between the tackles. They're 0 for 5 on third down. This is third and less than a yard. Sumo Karnbe swung down. But he has the first down. Judge Collier, a cornerback, made the stop for South Carolina. We're under four minutes to go now in the first half. 10-0 Gamecocks. That is clearly a salty South Carolina defense. That's evident after six quarters of this season. And their win last week against Old Dominion, they had two strip sacks inside the 10 yard line. It set up two very short touchdown drives, including the game winner in the fourth quarter. Patterson tripped up. He made it to the 19 yard line. Four more on the ground continuing to just churn away and this is the Kentucky offense I think Mark Stoops as a defensive mind would just love to see in this offensive line a group that's had some ups and downs these last couple years back with the new coach Eric Wolford responding to the challenge up front Patterson yanked down by Bengali Kamara another transfer from Pitt where he played a lot at 120 career tackles he's been banged up a little bit didn't play much in the opener but he'll play a lot today big play here for Kentucky's offense even with how efficient this drive has been and staying on schedule running the football 
South Carolina could somehow get a stop. That's going to feel like a win for the Gamecocks. 11th play of the drive. The first 10 have all been runs. And play 11 is as well. Sumo Karn Bay stacked up. Well, they went for a fourth and very short in their own territory and got stuffed. This is fourth and almost two, and Mark Stoops is going to send the field goal team on now. And it'll come after the two-minute timeout. The clock operators still getting used to that as well as we adjust <laughs> to the graphics. It's early in this season on a beautiful day here in Lexington, Kentucky. I was hoping for Greg's sake that tradition was going to end at the end of last season. But apparently it has not. Oh, goodness. Just low-hanging fruit from the studio. Aiden LaRosse kicks off after Kentucky's field goal. Capped a 57-yard drive. They had 51 yards total in their first five possessions. Here's a look at coverage where it counts presented by T-Mobile. And after a bit of a slow start, South Carolina started to find some rhythm offensively. They get Jared Brown going. They don't really have a lot of success right up the middle against Kentucky. They're too big, they're too physical up front, but they can live a little bit on the perimeter, find it on the jet sweep, and then they move the pocket for Lenora Sellers. Simplify the read. You see the bust in the back end defensively by Kentucky results and an easy touchdown to Mazio Bennett Jr. Really did a good job of adjusting, Dowell Logans did, after a bit of a slow start against a really stout front for Kentucky. Lenora Sellers is back in. See how they play it with under two minutes to go, just one timeout left. He lost the ball, went straight up in the air and caught out of midair. It was J.J. Weaver who knocked the ball out, and it was... Joshua Smith, the tight end, who is able to field it to loss of seven on the play. You might take a look at it. Is his hand moving forward? Doesn't look like it is right there. And big play by Kentucky's defense. What a very exciting tournament that has been. Jessica Pagula, an American, is in the women's final as we speak. After the Kentucky timeout, Mark Stoops wants the ball back. Lenora Sellers, high throw, intercepted. Ty Bryant brings it back inside the 30. His first career interception for the sophomore from right down the road here in Lexington, Frederick Douglass High School. And a lot of zone defense from Kentucky. You see all the defenders with eyes in the backfield just reading where Lenora Sellers is looking and he makes a big mistake. Really, really bad throw, bad decision in this situation, end of half situation under two minutes, trying to force it, misses high. And there's a defender waiting right behind it, Ty Bryant, who reels it in, now has Kentucky knocking on the door. What a huge change there at the end of half. First interception of the season thrown by Lenora Sellers. And the reality is both offenses have been poor. South Carolina has 102 yards of offense. 61 was on that one touchdown drive. Kentucky has 108 yards of offense, 57 on the last possession that ended in a field goal. Vandegrift's been scampering for his life the entire half. He picked up three. They have two timeouts left with a minute 25 to go in the half. Don't do, be in a crazy hurry just yet. You're already in a good spot. The one thing you have to think about if you're Vandegrift, veteran player, but not a lot of starts, not a lot of playing time under his belt. Cannot take a negative play right here and knock yourself out of field goal range. Jimmy Sumo Karn Bay, the running back. Vandergriff kept it. And it's a good thing he did because that jet sweep got blown up completely. Barryon Brown ran into Dylan Stewart. It was Demetrius Knight who made the tackle on Vandergriff. Clock still running, 45 seconds in the half. And a long time to get the play in here for the Wildcats. They run the ball in 18 straight plays. They cannot block the South Carolina pass rush, and that was Bush Hamden's biggest concern entering the game, particularly Kennard and Stewart. Short set, 
And an off-target throw. Dane Key lunged for it. Couldn't reach Traven with Judge Collier in coverage. And the offense continues weak. They're now one out of eight on third down. I think you have to give credit to this, both defenses, really. These are two very good defensive units. Excellent group, especially along both lines of scrimmage. But that throw just off the mark there from Vandegrift on a pretty critical third down. Alex Rayner now with 332 career points. Second among all active players. He's in his second year at Kentucky. He spent three years at Georgia Southern prior to that. Outstanding in both places. That's a 39-yard field goal. He's now made 58 three-pointers in his career. It's 10 to 6. That's not good news for Kentucky. Jagger Burton, their starting left guard, helped off the field after the successful field goal. And he's a stalwart on the offensive line. He's started every game the last two seasons. Today is 27th career start. They've already lost their starting right tackle, Gerald Mincy, earlier in the game. So 19 seconds to go in this first half. And more of the same in this rivalry. Ordinarily when they play, they're low scoring games. Last year was a 17 to 14 South Carolina win in Columbia. Aiden LaRosse kicks off. Transfer from Tennessee Martin. He was at Charlotte before that. Even the kickers are going to two or three or more schools. In this era of college football, Juju McDowell, the kickoff return, 17 yards. Kind of what we expected. You know, if you're an <laughs> offensive enthusiast, you're not getting what you like. But we came into this knowing, you know, two very good defensive teams, two inexperienced quarterbacks. Yeah, and, and two defensive lines that can just take over the game. And it's been difficult, really, to get a whole lot going offensively without taking two steps forward and then one significant step back. So now, for both offensive coordinators, Bush Hampton of Kentucky and Dow Loggins of South Carolina, you got to figure out a way here in the second half to avoid those massive negative plays that give the momentum to the defense and basically force you to punt the ball. Laura Sellers took a knee. I mean, South Carolina ends that with just 101 yards rushing. After a mere 288 last week against Old Dominion, Kentucky not much better, 115 total yards. South Carolina will get the second half kickoff. 10-6 Gamecocks will send you to the studio for the State Farm Halftime Report after this message. And a word from our ABC stations. From Kroger Field in Lexington, Kentucky, the first conference game of this SEC season. And South Carolina leads Kentucky 10 to 6 at the half. A look at some impact players presented by Home Depot. And in the case, Greg McElroy for Lenore Sellers, uh, his numbers below what they would have been because he missed just about half of the first half with a lower body injury. He played a very clean first half with the exception of the terrible decision at the end, which led to a field goal for Kentucky right before the end of half. So a solid first half, but a little bit up and down on the other side. Demi Sumo Karnbe for Kentucky really had a lot of rhythm running the football between the tackles. Aiden LaRosse kicks off. It'll be the touchback. Sean McDonough and Greg McElroy, we had 216 yards of total offense between the two teams in the first half and you know I think if you're Kentucky in particular Greg you have a problem because you can't block in the passing game you're not even trying to throw it anymore and they don't have a home run hitter in the running game among the running backs yeah it's three yards of cloud of dust right now that's the recipe for Kentucky here in the second half I mean every time they dropped back it's almost like bad things happen because of the pass rush that's relentless by South Carolina and then for South Carolina they've had some good moments it just you had one bad mistake by your quarterback and then you played most of the second quarter with your backup. So, got to feel better if you're offensively for South Carolina. Laura Sellers comes out throwing, and he's on target to Michael Smith, a freshman tight end for an eight-yard gain. Shane Beamer loves Michael Smith, that he is a dude. Sellers left the game at 317 of the first quarter, returned with under two minutes to go in the second quarter. Raheem Sanders carries out to the 
41. He had five carries in the first half for no yards gained. And eight yards right there, and you got to get him going. Take some of the pressure off Lenora Sellers. And much of what South Carolina's been able to do offensively has really been sideline to sideline. At some point, they have to commit to trying to get more vertical in the run game. We get to the line quickly. Play fake by Sellers. He didn't see the rusher coming. The ball got loose and it got picked up by Michael Smith, the dude who was in the right place. Maxwell Hairston came on the blitz and knocked the ball out, but Kentucky didn't get possession of it. It's still a loss of two. And this is a really big ask of the true freshman Michael Smith. You got the corner who's excellent off the edge, and Hairston that's blitzing and breathing fire. He dislodges the football, but somehow Michael Smith still saves a lot of yardage there by picking it up and getting what he can, but a tough ass there on the true freshman. Hairston, an outstanding corner. Defense coordinator Brad White says we want him to lock down one side of the field. Another blitz, another loose ball. And this time it looked like the Cats might have gotten it. They did not. Zion Childress came on the blitz. Another secondary blitzer and Kamar Bell, the left guard, recovered the fumble. And just right off the edge, Goes Zion Childress, and Kentucky, not a team that blitzes very often. Very rare. Does Brad White, the coordinator, call the blitz? The ball is dislodged. It looked like immediately Dion Walker was going to reel it in, but somehow, miraculously, one of the South Carolina offensive linemen, Kamar Bell, is able to somehow pull it away to secure possession inside their own end. Well, they're one of the least blitzing teams in the country. Did not blitz at all in the first half. Of course, there wasn't much drop back game from South Carolina. There's Brad White in his sixth year as defensive coordinator. Very rarely does he bring pressure, but they did it on two plays in a row, and it worked to perfection. Since he took over in 2019, just 15% of opponents drop backs have been blitzed. That's the lowest number in the FBS. So very rare, but effective when Brad White dials it up. After a delay of game, it's third down and 24. Lenora Sellers, the red shirt freshman, looking to the sideline for some guidance. Shane Beamer's on the field looking like he might call a timeout. Well, the play clock isn't running, so he doesn't need to do that. Whatever that was about, it's running now. Sanders, the running back, under duress. Sellers got it off. It's incomplete. Intended for Jared Brown. So both offensive coaching staffs were concerned about defenders on the other team who can, in their words, wreck the game. And that's what's happening right now. Yeah, and it looked like at halftime, the defensive staff of Kentucky said, hey, we, we need to make sure that we speed up the process for the young quarterback, Lenora Sellers. By doing that, you bring pressure. They did so on first and second down, and it led to a lot of negative yardage and a couple bad decisions. Ty Kroger punted three times for a 54.7 average. And this is another booming punt back at the 15-yard line. Jamori Macklin trying to get outside, and he could not. 58-yard punt, eight yards on the return. Well, the first player out of Kentucky's locker room at halftime was injured left guard Jagger Burton. He jogged back and forth with training staff, was frustrated, shaking his head in pain and frustration. Head coach Mark Stoops told me that he's most likely not going to play, but training staff says he's lobbying to try to go back in, but he is not healthy. But they're hoping Gerald Mincy is going to return to bolster the line, and I'm told the O-line needs to be better. He said we're better when we're running the ball downhill, not going side to side. Nowhere to run there for Demi Sumo Karnbe. So the good news is Gerald Mincy is back in at right tackle. He left in the first half, had to be helped off. But Jagger Burton, who's been a fixture left guard for two plus seasons now, is out. And Dylan Ray, number 73, is in, who's played very little. It's a transfer from West Virginia. 
for his dad. John was an outstanding offensive lineman. Went on to play for the Indianapolis Colts. Second and ten. Sumo Kong Bay rushed for 73 yards in the first half. His career high is 79. Vandegrift under duress. Intended for Dane Key. The pressure came from Kyle Kennard. The transfer from Georgia Tech, who's made an immediate impact at South Carolina. And these two edge rushers have been outstanding. Even in the first game last week, Kyle Kennard and Dylan Stewart, here in obvious third downs, so tough on the on the quarterback, especially a young quarterback like Brock Vandergrift. I'd be thinking screen. I mean, something to slow these guys down who are just breathing fire off the edge. In the second quarter, Kentucky ran the ball 19 times and threw one pass. They're one for eight on third down. Here comes the pressure, and Vandegrift goes down. He might be starting to think, you know what? It wasn't so bad standing on the sideline watching Stetson Bennett and Carson Beck play. And just two Gamecock defenders right up the middle in the A-gap. As soon as you see the left movement of the center, Eli Cox, that frees up the linebacker to drop back, you just don't. You're not able to hold it long enough when they bring that internal pressure, especially with the running back in protection. Vandegrift's got nothing. has got to go down to take the sack. The fourth for South Carolina. They had five in the opener against Old Dominion. And 37 yards lost by Kentucky on the sacks. Wilson Berry punts and a good one. Juju McDowell. Taken down at the 42. 49 yard punt, two yard return. Maxwell Hairston, the tackle on special teams for the Wildcats. Time for the AFLAC trivia question. Mark Stoops has 74 wins as Kentucky's head coach now in his 12th season. That's most in school history. Who is second on that list? 12 seasons, by the way, is now the longest tenured head coach in the Southeastern Conference with the retirement of Nick Saban. Can we already go ahead and anoint Coach Saban as the Rookie of the Year in television <laughs> for I think that's a safe 2024? Boy, he is terrific on game day. Here's Raheem Sanders, wiggles his way to the 46. A gain of four. Got a rough year last year at Arkansas. Injured his knee very early. Also suffered a shoulder injury. Had surgery on both. A little out of shape when he arrived in Columbia, but he has worked very hard to get back in great shape. You saw that in the opener when they used him with regularity in a career high 24 carries in the 94 degree heat and humidity of Columbia last week. Four more there. Here's Molly. You mentioned Rocket Sanders' two offseason surgeries. He dedicated himself this offseason to get back into playing shape. Only player to stay in Columbia over the summer. He was there working out and training six days a week, doing bear crawls. He lost 20 pounds, 6-7% uh, body fat. He says he's in the best shape of his life. Go out of five on third down, and they're now 0 for 6 as Lenore Sellers got collared a yard short. Of the line to make Shane Beamer's right on the line of scrimmage talking to his coaches about what to do here and just a run through at the second level the offensive line of South Carolina just doesn't quite pick it up as the left guard Marvell tries to kick out Rayner and just Rayner makes a play behind the line of scrimmage Dion Walker at the bottom of it and lined up as if they're going to go for it Interesting decision if they do in this defensive struggle. They run Brady Hunt a tight end trying to get movement, and there is a flag. Offside on the defense, number eight, five yard penalty. Penalty results in a first down. Octavius Oxendine. Mark Stoop looking on in disbelief. Such a mature and veteran group up front. Shane Beamer with a wise call to go with a freeze play. Tell everybody on the office to freeze and hard count as much as possible. See if Kentucky will give it to you without snapping the ball. And a big mistake there by the Cats. And the fifth-year senior Oxendine jumped. 
Probably weren't going to snap it, you would think. Now on first down, Michael Smith. Is stopped. Let's bring in Matt Austin. Matt, a lot of talk this year about they're going to crack down on things done by the offense to try to get the defenses to jump. Yeah, I, and I don't like the call on the field on this play. The defender definitely jumped in the neutral zone, but the rule is the offense is allowed to react, but it has to be a natural reaction. Reaching out forward and touching the, the defender, that's not a natural reaction. I think that should have gone on the offense. All right, thank you, Matt. Robbie Ashford back in, and he gets buried for a loss. Back at the 48-yard line by De'Eric Jackson, who's been Kentucky's leading tackler in each of the previous two seasons. And both these defenses now, I mean, they are bit, being so aggressive and trying to fly downhill. At some point, even if it's not in success, you have to take some shots downfield because these safeties and these linebackers, they are sprinting to the line of scrimmage almost as soon as the ball is snapped. Lenora Sellers back in. They're 0 for 6 on third down. And Kentucky's 1 out of 9. Sellers dodged the rush and found a wide open receiver. Mazio Bennett, who has the only touchdown in this game, with a huge catch, 32 yards on a broken play. It was Tyree Spherebury who forced Sellers away from the pocket. And a great job here by Sellers. Playing like a veteran as Fearby is unblocked, runs right around. Sellers keeps his eyes downfield, continues to move, remains in a passing, passing posture, and finds the receiver downfield in Bennett. Just a great job there by the freshman. Rocket Sanders is the running back. They fake a pitch to him. Another open receiver and a touchdown. Joshua Simon, the tight end, 16 yards. Well, I've said for a while that these guys are starting to fly downhill. They don't fly downhill, but look at Sellers fake the pitch to Rocket Sanders, gets the defenders to bite just ever so slightly and floats it right up and over the top of the zone for the touchdown that was really well executed by Sellers and a great call by Dow Logan. The extra point good by Alex Herrera. Simon the score. He's a sixth year senior. Spent four years in Western Kentucky, now in his second at the University of South Carolina. 17 to six Gamecocks in Lexington. Time now for our player check-in presented by Allstate. How about the play by Lenora Sellers on the last couple snaps for the Gamecocks? Keeping the drive alive on third down, avoiding the rush, keeping his eyes downfield, making a nice throw, and then holding those secondary level defenders of Kentucky with a quick little pitch play action, and he throws the seam right behind him. Just excellent execution. The last two snaps from Sellers, and you see this young man, a man that looked a little bit at times, he had deer in headlights last week. He admitted Start, that. Yep. Yeah, and, and who wouldn't? It's your first college start. It's a pivotal moment in your career, looking like he's settling in. You see when this young man has confidence, he can play at a really high level. Nice ability to avoid the rush. You know, he has the knack for stepping in the right direction. He has the strength to stay on his feet when they wrap him up. Demi Sumo Karnbeg blasted inside the 15-yard line after just a 10-yard kickoff return. But where does Kentucky go for answers? They can't block the pass rush. They've completed three passes, and they've given up four sacks. And they really don't have an explosive running back. They have to get the passing game going at some point. I mean, Rock Vandegrift trying very few throws in the second quarter. The one he did try was off the mark, probably because he, he was cold, hadn't thrown in forever. So got to get him into a rhythm because you're going to need the passing game at some point because right now playing from behind, not going to be able to run it four yards in the cloud of dust over and over again. Transfer from Georgia. Comes out with a play action pass, giving time that time. There's a flag down back by the line of scrimmage on a completion to Dane Key. They finally complete one down the field. Will it come back? There are actually a couple of flags. Vandergriff's clapping as if it's against South Carolina.
are fouls on both team on the play. Illegal shift on the offense. Players were sent prior to boss being snapped. Personal foul, hands to the face, number 90 on the defense. Those fouls offset will replay first down. Wiped out a 24-yard play. T.J. Sanders called for the hands to the face. I mean, that is just massive. I mean, the illegal shift is so correctable. He has the tight end on the right side of the line of scrimmage that's moving as he sends the motion. If you watch Dingle, 85, he's going to scoot straight, straight back as they bring the motion. So two guys are moving at the same time. So not only is this a massive play, you wipe out a huge completion plus 15 yards on top of it. So for that five-yard shift, it's really full, almost 30 yards of field position. Put down the 24-yard gain. Sumo Karnbe with another flag down at the line of scrimmage. Is this going to wipe out an eight-yard game? Actually got nine. Bam Martin Scott the tackle. Holding on the offense, number 73. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. Replay first down. It's Dylan Ray, the backup who has come in for Jagger Burton at guard. He was engaged with TJ Sanders there and as the back gets to the outside, he grabs the left shoulder, the right shoulder, mm -hmm. excuse me, of Sanders, and the center judge is able to see that pretty clearly. And just two huge mistakes from Kentucky out of the gate. He actually had a couple of effective plays. Two plays that would have been a combined 33 yards wiped out because of the flags. They're back on their own six, first and 16. Running room for Sumo Karnbe. There's another flag down at the line of scrimmage. Fans booing the officials, thinking that this is going to be another call against Kentucky. Holding number 69 on the offense. Penalty is half the distance of the goal. Replay first down. Marcus Cox, the guilty party, seventh year offensive tackle. This is just brutal. My guy's played a ton of football. It's almost like he comes out a little bit too flat. Brian Thomas works right around him, and he grabs him by the horse collar behind to have a big holding call. Just bad footwork there by the left tackle Cox. It's about as frustrating as it gets for Kentucky. That took down a 13-yard play. They've had 46 yards in games, wiped out by the penalties. It's still first down and 19. Sumo Karnbe knocked down by Debo Williams for a loss of one. Fifth year senior out of Smyrna, Delaware. When he came out of Smyrna, he was heading to the University of Delaware, didn't have any Power Five offers, but they shut down the 2020 season because of COVID. He never played for the Blue Hens, came to South Carolina, and has emerged as a first team all conference linebacker a year ago. Has really become a force and worked all offseason to become more mobile, more flexible, and has become a more rangy player as a result. They're on the two. This feels dangerous for Kentucky. Five minutes to go, third quarter. Just a three man rush, and still Vandegrift in trouble. Throws it high, and it's almost picked off. Desperation throw, trying to get it to Josh Cat as the tight end. Even when they rushed three, it was almost a disaster for Kentucky. O'Donnell Fortune was in coverage nearest Caddis. And DeAndre Jules just working against Eli Cox, the center. I mean, swims it to the right and then back to the left and forces the air and throw that was nearly intercepted. Cox considered to be a good center. Second team all conference a year ago. Making his 37th straight start. They're one out of nine on third down. It's third down and 20. Three-man rush and a high throw over the receiver's head. It was almost intercepted by a diving Vicari Swain. And now they're not booing the officials. They're booing this Kentucky offense. So frustrating there from Kentucky. I mean, to give up pass rush against blitz or against four-man pressure, that's understandable, especially against a group like this. But to make mistakes on three consecutive plays and to give up pressure against a three-man rush to a nose guard and a seven-man protection, it's almost inexcusable. Wilson Berry punting for the sixth time.
Juju McDowell caught it on the run. Made the first man miss, but not the second. And he's down at the 47-yard line, tackled by Maxwell Hairston. 48-yard punt. Three-yard return. 11-point lead for the Gamecocks. Time to answer our Affleck trivia question. Mark Stoops winning his coach at Kentucky with 74 all-time wins. Who's second? I'm going to say Bear Bryant. Correct. <laughs> with 60 back in the 40s and early 50s. Mark Stoops done a very nice job here. Today has been ugly for his team. That last possession was officially minus 10 yards, but they had three penalties that wiped out 46. And if you're wondering, by the balls on the 43. They also had a penalty on the punt for an illegal shift, so South Carolina took the penalty yardage on the end of the play. Pass from Lenora Sellers through the hands of Rocket Sanders. Sellers was originally committed to go to the University of Virginia when Bracco Mendenhall left as head coach. The offensive coordinator of Virginia, Robert and I, and quarterback coach Jason Beck were going to Syracuse to work for Dino Babers, so Sellers committed to Syracuse. He hands it off here to Sanders. And after a very good senior season, South there's a flag down on this plate too. South Carolina came after him hard and he decided he wanted to stay close to home. He's from Florence, South Carolina, won a state championship in his senior season. Become a flag fest here in the third quarter. Second down. Mazio Bennett has otherwise had a terrific day, including a touchdown reception. That wiped out a six yard game. Constantly mistakes right now from both offenses. And these defenses are great. I mean, they fly around. They're a handful, both of them, along the lines of scrimmage. But man, there's been some really bad fundamentals with the technique trying to block, not just up front along the offensive line, but on the perimeter as well. That's two holds now on South Carolina receivers. And you wonder where the production is going to come from the wide receiver group for South Carolina. We mentioned the lack of big play running backs for Kentucky. They're trying to replace Xavier Leggett at South Carolina. Sellers got it off to Jared Brown. That's 71 catches from Leggett a year ago. He wound up being little known to becoming a first round pick of the Carolina Panthers at the end of last season. Yeah, and it's really the offense more to try to find ways to get him the ball. And that guy right now for South Carolina really is yet to emerge. I think they have a lot of capable weapons, but do they truly have a number one wide receiver? I think Dow Loggins is trying to figure that out. They're one on a seven on third down. Kentucky's one for ten. Bennett. Went in motion and came back. Sellers a clean pocket, pulled it down, and then completes one for a first down. Out of bounds at the 31-yard line, Jared Brown, with D.J. Waller Jr. making the tackle, a gain of 13. And their best cornerback, Maxwell Hairston, is on his way to the Kentucky locker room. Potentially a big loss to a guy that's been so effective and in intercepting balls and, and kind of changing the momentum of the game. So potentially a big loss there for Kentucky. Straight ahead, Rocket Sanders to the 27. Molly? Yes, Sean, Maxwell Harrison was really emotional, throwing his helmet in frustration and pain on the sideline. He was dealing with an apparent left shoulder injury. He's going back for further evaluation. I'll keep you updated as soon as I know more. Big loss for Mark Stoops. He mentioned earlier that Brad White, the coordinator, said Hairston's the guy who they count on to just lock down one side of the field. There's five career interceptions. He had two pick sixes in a game last year. Sanders rumbles inside the 25. He comes up about a yard short of the first down. D.J. Waller, another tackle. He is in there for Hairston, the backup corner who transferred to Kentucky from Michigan. Big down here for Kentucky's defense, forcing a field goal after really South Carolina had great field position. 
after the terrible drive by their offense, forcing them to settle for three would be absolutely massive. Kind of swing momentum back onto their side. De'Aaron Jackson came off the field, as you saw. He's been their leading tackler the last couple of years. So Kentucky defending a third down and one with two minutes to go in the third quarter. Trying to stay in the game without a couple of their best defensive players on the field. Play clock at five. Sanders bounces outside and has room. Inside the five, lunging for the pylon. Touchdown! <laughs> 22 yards for Raheem Rocket Sanders, and South Carolina is pulling away. And how about South Carolina's back? Rocket Sanders looking a little bit like the Arkansas version of himself from a couple of years ago as the progressive pylon cam shows that that ball crossed the plane. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does in the left arm. Great effort there as Rocket Sanders refuses to go down. Doesn't look like any part of his body is down. It's like his left backside starts to get down, but the ball at that point was already extended. So unlikely that there will be anything to see on this review that would overturn the call. And how about the run there on third and short? I think the only question here is, does one foot touch the sideline around the two-yard line there? Right. It wears yeah. the ball at that point, too. Yeah. It, the foot is clearly out of bounds there. And that, then the question was, was the ball already over the pylon? Let's see it extend here. Foot's out right there. Now sync things up to look as to whether or not that ball has crossed the plane. Now you need to leave the producing to fill Dean. <laughs> well, <laughs> All right. Yeah, I think he's out before the ball gets to the pylon. Very close, and it, of course, has to be indisputable video evidence beyond all doubt. I thought it was there, not to tell Phil what to do again. But <laughs> I think if they slowed that one down a little bit, his heel is on the line, on the boundary, with the ball still heading toward the goal line. John Allman is the replay official. All right. When is the foot on the sideline? Right, right there. there. And the ball, the ball, to me, I mean, it's not right down the line, but it doesn't look like he's at the goal line yet. It looks, I, I agree with you, but is there enough video evidence to overturn? I Probably think is, not. Is the challenge that the video replay officials will have. And right there, I can't know for certain whether or not that nose is crossed. And since it was called a touchdown on the field, it's tough to assume they overturn it. But man, either way, very, very close play there. Taking a very long look at this. Either way, a promising second half on offense for South Carolina. Sanders, one of the best running backs in the country two years ago at Arkansas. They rushed for 1,443 yards and 10 touchdowns. For a little bit of context, that's 320 more yards rushing than South Carolina ran for as a team all of last season. Last season was rough as Molly amplified due to the injuries. He had a connection with Dow Loggins, who's the OC here at South Carolina. Loggins spent two years on the coaching staff at Arkansas while Rocket Sanders was there. And they need this guy. We asked Dow Loggins yesterday, he threw the ball, he ran the ball only 36% of the time last year. Is that because you had Spencer Rattler and Xavier Leggett? Or is it because you had a bad offensive line and not a very good running back group, or both? And he said, really both. Yeah. Now they have a good running back, and they think an improved offensive line. And a quarterback that's very capable with his legs as well, and still kind of a, a question mark at wide receiver, too. So you would think this offense would certainly revert more towards being a ground and pound attack. Here's David Smith with the verdict. David's not a big rush today. Just get a lot of use out of that communication system to talk to the other officials. All right. After further review, the runner was out of bounds prior to the ball breaking the plane of the goal line. The ball will be placed at the one half yard line. First down. 
Well, I'm not sure it was conclusive, but I think if we both had to bet the house, <laughs> we would, would bet agree. that they got this right. I would think so, too. I would agree. And it was close, for sure. It was a great effort. Now with this new lease on life, what can Kentucky's defensive line do? First and goal for South Carolina. South Carolina, 112 yards of offense in this quarter, more than the 101 they had the entire first half. Sellers, trying to follow a lead blocker. He got driven back. I think they'd have him push it into the end zone a lot around the goal line as strong as he is, particularly in the lower body. Uh, 240 pounds, I mean, you would like for the quarterback downhill run type of run right there he's a little bit slow to hit it never really developed any forward momentum so we think on these next couple carries if he gets a chance he's going to put his foot in the ground and be aggressive and attack that line of scrimmage at 100 miles an hour we spoke with the kentucky coaches yesterday brad white said sellers reminds him of anthony richardson which is a big compliment flag thrown raheem sanders clearly got into the end zone that time well, there's a flag thrown. Well, this replay review could turn out to be big if South Carolina winds up not Holding scoring a touchdown. The offense, number 87, 10-year-old the previous five. Replay, second down. That gave Shane Beamer a headache. Brady Hunt, the transfer tight end out of Ball State. And just a massive play right here. You're going to see Brady Hunt really just bear hug J.J. Weaver. I mean, that left arm all the way wrapped around this Rocket Sanders tries to work to the outside. I mean, just enormous right there. You cannot have a hold on the goal line. You gotta do whatever it takes to keep those hands inside. And Shane Beamer looks on in agony as his offense is in a tough spot now. Each team has been penalized five times. Feels like there have been more than that because many of them have been quite costly. The fake to Sanders. Sellers fires. There's another flag down. The pass is incomplete in the end zone. He was trying to jam it into Joshua Simon, the tight end, who scored the last touchdown. The 19th receiving touchdown of his Holding career. On the defense, number 10. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. Results in automatic first down. Jansen Dunn, the backup cornerback he plays the nickel for them a transfer from Ohio State and yes both of these teams are loaded with transfers Jared Brown working a post on the inside and Dunn with that left arm just grabbing the receiver as he crosses face and it's tough to be out there on an island but he was beat it's a tough matchup there for him against Brown so first and goal and if South Carolina scores a touchdown, now this whole sequence works out better for them because it's going to take more time off the clock. And it's Sanders not to be denied. Joshua Simon leading the way. The six-yard touchdown run with 28 seconds to go in the third quarter. And a play they had some success with earlier. Just guard, tight end, counter. And they block it up perfectly. This time, number 87, Brady Hunt does keep his hands inside. Sanders hits it at an angle and is too difficult, too strong to bring down before he finds pay dirt. Just an excellent drive there on the short field by the Gamecocks. Alex Herrera for the extra point. And it's 24 to six. South Carolina with the lead, the SEC on ABC. Lenoris Sanders and the Gamecock offense find a nice, nice rhythm here in the third quarter. I think he's going to be a very good player for them for a long time. And I think it's confidence. I mean, it's as much confidence as anything else. I mean, you started to see it on that third down conversion. The throws after that have really been pinpoint. I think he's made good decisions. So you can see, man, he's got a very high ceiling now. It's about believing in himself that he can do it against the best in the, in the country in the SEC. Alex Herrera kicks off. Dropped for a moment by Barry on Brown. It's been that kind of a day for the Cats. A uh, flag thrown from deep center field. We have three total penalties enforced in the first half. There have been eight in this quarter, and this will be the ninth. A 
might be easier to tell us which plays haven't had a penalty mm. on them here the last couple series. Just watching football, it seems like there were more flags thrown all over Maybe football this year. Back. Number 44 on the receiving team. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. First down. Let's go back to the AT&T connected cam. This is a three man rush on the last drive. And this has been the story of the day. Seven men in protection for Kentucky. Seven tight end and a running back. And yet against a three man rush where you have four guys that should be helping with the blocking scheme and yet you still give up pressure in the middle. And that's been the story of the day for Brock Vandegrift. He's been under pressure almost every single time he's dropped back. And I don't care how talented you are, there's nothing you can do when you don't have enough time to survey downfield. They gotta pick it up along the O-line. He has three completions today. He's been sacked four times. He's taken a beating. And that will likely be the last play of the third quarter. Now he came out last week against Southern Miss, ran the ball a couple of times, and he lowered the shoulder to deliver a hit. He said Party was so amped up he hadn't played in a long time. He also wanted to show his new teammates that he was dedicated to winning at any cost. ESPN's presentation of college football on ABC will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Coach, how will you rally this team to come back and win this? Well, we got to do something because right now it's a, it's a, it's it's an embarrassment, just error after error, self-inflicted wounds, penalties. It's it's ridiculous. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you. As usual, direct and to the point, Mark Stoops. His team down 24 to 6 as we head to the fourth quarter. And a lot of the folks have left Kroger Field. Brock Vandegrift, terrible pass in the coverage. Nick Eamon Worry bringing it back. Nick Eamon Worry scores a touchdown. Right on cue, self inflicted wounds. That was a terrible decision by Vandegrift. His receiver was surrounded. Eamon Worry picked it off and brought it back 25, fitting that the defense should score. And Eamon Worry's eyes are in the backfield, obviously not at this exact moment, but in a moment they will be. And he's watching the whole way, and he just watched Vandergriff as he drifts back. He drifts right underneath the intended receiver, makes the interception. Vandergriff trying to get something going, doesn't see the underneath coverage, throws it right to Eamon Worry who takes it to the house for the pick six. Just a tremendous second half performance from this South Carolina defense, both up front and in the secondary. Third career interception for Eamon Worry, a junior from Irmo in the Columbia area. And a starter almost from day one. Uh, on the offense, number seven. That 15 yard penalty will be added at the kickoff. We'll have the try. That is number seven's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. <laughs> he referred to them as the offense. He actually plays defense, <laughs> but feels like offense. I guess in this instance, since it was after the play, he could be deemed to be part of the offensive team. They're kicking an extra point. What do you think Mark Stoops' blood pressure is right about now? Herrera adds the extra point. How high is the point where you need to be thinking about getting medical attention because he's about to lose it. I don't blame him. I mean, he can get hot. Yeah. The frustration and the self-inflicted mistakes have to be just beside yourself if you're more This one had no chance. None. And to throw it back across your body and I mean, Brock Vandegrift's a fourth-year player, and, and he's not started a lot of football. He threw some throws last week in his first career start against Southern Miss into traffic. He got away with them. And sometimes when you throw it into traffic last week and get away with them, did have one interception, but you learn that you can't get away with a lot when you're playing against quality competition. Just Kentucky faithful have to be shocked with this offensive performance. And they've been put to sleep. The, let me ask you this question though. You're down 24 to six before he throws that. At a certain point, if you're the quarterback, say, so you know what? We gotta try to do something. Yeah. Even though I know this is a risky throw, what do we have to lose at this juncture? Yeah, I mean, it's it's perfectly reasonable. I mean, at that point, still a three score game. Are you gonna get three possessions the way that South Carolina's starting to run the football? Probably not, but 
you don't want to practice bad habits either. I mean, if nothing's there, you don't want to kind of get used to throwing it and trying things. And there's just really no reason to try to attempt that, especially on first and 10 deep in your own end. Kentucky has run eight plays in this half for minus 11 yards, and the defense has now scored a touchdown. Still a gusty breeze here. Temperature still 70 degrees. And a lot of the patrons here have decided to go do something else on this beautiful day. Let me sneak in an emergency night. <laughs> Keeneland's not open yet. A couple more weeks. Well, minus 11 will get you heading to the exits. And it doesn't even account for the hidden yardage that was lost as well. I mean, four straight penalties leading minus nearly 50 yards of offense. Well, they are squibbed it down the field. I don't want to risk a big return by Barryon Brown. He led the country last year. 17 yards on that return. Kick off your week one NFL Sunday at 10 a.m. with the countdown crew on ESPN. The app, they'll have the early breaking stories, injury updates, previews of each game right up to kickoff. And then Monday night, it's the 55th season of Monday Night Football. And it kicks off on ESPN Deportes and ESPN Plus. Eight o'clock, the Jets and San Francisco. Payne and Eli on ESPN2. Coverage starts with SVP and the Monday Night Countdown crew at six. The return of Aaron Rodgers to the Jets. He went seven and ten last year. Gavin Wimsat is the quarterback. Maybe they're just trying to avoid more damage to Brock Vandegrift. There's a flag down as he hands it off to Demi Sumo Kongbe. Kind of feel for Vandegrift. He didn't really have a fair a fair chance today. No, I mean, they really never got him in rhythm. You ask him to throw one pass in the second quarter. I mean, that's impossible on a guy that hasn't played a ton of football. The illegal formation on the offense. Number 54, the right tackle, is not on the line of scrimmage. There was five or more in the backfield. Five-yard penalty, replay, first down. There was a point, too, where Vandergrift was under pressure pretty much every single time he dropped back. Mm -hmm. I mean, just about the whole day. He did not complete a pass after seven and a half minutes into the first quarter. The last completion was midway through the first quarter. Seven penalties minus 11 yards. About as ugly a performance as there can be. There's another flag down. Sumo Kongbe has actually rushed for about 400 yards today, but about 320 has come back on penalties, it seems. That one's 26 if it stands. Illegal formation. Wow. On the offense. Number 54, the right tackle is not for the line scrimmage. Therefore, there was five, five more players in the backfield. Five yard penalty. Replay first down. I know this is a point of emphasis. Uh, clearly, it was watching some of these NFL games, including the great Ravens Chiefs game the other night, but uh, it's going to make football unwatchable. Well, that's pretty clear cut there. Yeah, I mean, even without the emphasis, he's definitely deep. But I mean, these are the penalties that just drive you crazy if you're a coach because there's effort penalties, the holdings, the pass interferences, the even the face masks. But and then there's just dumb penalties, illegal formation, illegal shift. Uh, Unsportsmanlike. I mean, those are the things that just drive coaches insane. And my goodness, how many have Kentucky had today? Wim Sat, first year transfer. He can do this. Runs out of bounds across midfield. He was the starter for all 13 games at Rutgers last year. They rushed for 497 yards. 6'3, 227 from Owensboro, Kentucky. Very highly recruited out of high school. And many were surprised when he chose Rutgers, but he had a connection with the then coordinator, Sean Gleason, apparently. Jamori Macklin. Scampers out of bounds with another first down. He's the cousin of Jeremy Macklin, who was a great star at Missouri and played eight years in the NFL. It's always hard at this point of the season to figure out who you are offensively. Man, it looks like the best success they've had here in the second half has been sideline to sideline the run game. Jason Patterson, 
to the 31-yard line. There are some substitutes in on the defense. As you might expect, Gilbert Edmond made the tackle. He's back in South Carolina. Started his career in Columbia, transferred last year to Florida State, and then came back. Wimsack to the sideline, catch made for a short gain. Brought in by Dane Key. They do have three receivers, Greg, on this team who have a thousand career receiving yards in Key, Barry on Brown, and Macklin. Can they get them the ball? Can they block long enough? Yeah, they have good weapons, but man, the pass blocking has certainly left something to be desired. Well, this will be the start of a quarterback controversy. Certainly has the earmarks of it. And Vandergraaf wishing that some of the starters weren't on the field when he was in there. Wimsat taken down from behind by Debo Williams. I know there will be a strong reaction like that. I don't know if that's entirely fair. I mean, Vandergriff dropped back to throw it 15 times today. It was under pressure 9 out of the 15. And the, the two that he wasn't were short throws. So just mm. you can't get a fair or proper evaluation of what your quarterback can be. When you're not giving him enough time to survey the field. Man, Martin Scott dropped Sumo Karn Bay for a loss. Vandergriff very highly recruited out of high school in Georgia. Part of that incredible 2021 high school quarterback class. That included three players who were drafted in the top 10 picks in the most recent NFL draft. Second and 12 under 11 minutes to go. And another Kentucky penalty. Full start, 75 on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. Eli Cox. Here's that high school class that we were talking about from 2021. Headlined by Caleb Williams, Drake May, and JJ McCarthy, all taken in the top 10. And still playing college football this bunch. See, that's and grip was. Uh, just about as highly regarded as any of them. Here's Wimsat bouncing off some would-be tacklers and down to the 23-yard line. Just see the depth of that 2021 class. But Vandergriff showed last week he's got all the tools. I mean, he can do everything that you want him to do as a quarterback. But at this point of his career, he's not the type that can just take the team and just pull them along with him. He needs the team around him to also play better. Still a little bit more of a game manager at the moment, but in time he can develop and become a more complete player. But man, he needs some help along the offensive line. Wimsat intercepted. Picked off by Jalen Kilgore. And again, talking about the Kentucky struggles on offense for Mark Stoops. Give this defense credit. They are terrific at every level. Plenty of talent, more depth than they've had in the past. Second interception of this season for Kilgore. He brought it back 14 yards. You're watching the SEC on ABC, presented by Burger King from Kroger Field in Lexington. All South Carolina, they're going to go to 2-0 and with the defense dominating in both weeks. Last week against Old Dominion and today here against Kentucky. Under 10 minutes to go, Juju McDowell, the ball carrier. Deion Walker made the tackle. Gain of four. SEC football continues tonight on SEC Network. 745 Houston against number 15. Oklahoma. Download the ESPN app or go to ESPNplus.com slash schedule to watch all the action. McDowell remains the running back. Lenoris Sellers, the quarterback. Throwing for single coverage. Trying to get it to Nick Harbor. There is a flag down. Maxwell Hairston. 
had the coverage. He left for a while and has returned. Pass interference on the defense, number 11. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. Zion Childress called for the penalty. Well, Nick Harbour is an intriguing football player, dual sport athlete, great track athlete. 6'5, 235. There's many in the fan base for the Gamecocks who would like to see him get more involved. And, and I think that, that I understand because he's great on the video game. He's elite, elite speed, elite size game-changing guy that gets off the bus but at this point of his development he's still a bit of a work in progress he's not a guy that's played a ton of receiver he played defensive end in high school played a little bit of tight end but didn't necessarily want to gain the weight because that would have an impact on his performance on the track so he's a full-time wide receiver and still learning the position the nuance of the position so in time the staff has done a great job with wideouts in the past but he at this point is not ready to be an alpha dog wide receiver but the skill set is there chance to get him some reps in this situation to track all american he's run a 10.11 in the 100 meters michael smith down the sideline they're well into kentucky territory all the way down to the 20 yard line goes the freshman from savannah georgia the true freshman who was not there for spring practice, so he's still learning. He only, only arrived in fall camp. That's a 36-yard play. And they're starting to make the offensive stats look good, or at least better. Well, there's a chance they could be going to 2-0 and oh without reaching 300 total yards of offense in either game. And don't look now if you're Kentucky, but next Saturday night, Georgia is here the number one team in the country. Juju McDowell with another flag down. And a helmet off. Kentucky, by the way, was flagged for one penalty in the first half. They're now up to 11. Really uncharacteristic, it feels like, too. I mean, this team is a team that always seems to do kind of the little things and Feels like a group that can kind of grind on you, and they've really developed offensively the last few years. But man, this is really uncharacteristic. The offense, number 75, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, first down. Case and Henry, the right tackle. One of the reasons they think their offensive line should be better this year. He's back healthy. He got injured in their opener last year against North Carolina. <laughs> Oscar Attaway the third has come in at running back. A transfer from North Texas. South Carolina brought in 21 transfers this year. Kentucky 15. Attaway dumped immediately by Alex Afari Jr. The loss of one. So South Carolina is going to win its SEC opener for the first time since 2017 against Missouri. They had lost six straight conference openers, which was the longest for the Gamecocks since they entered the conference in 1992. And the second longest active streak behind Vanderbilt's 12 straight season opening SEC defeats. Lenora Sellers takes it down and runs out of bounds at the 28. And meanwhile, a problem for Kentucky here at home, Greg, this is going to be eight losses now in their last 10 conference home games. Yeah, that's pretty surprising, too, as this place has developed into a very difficult place for opposing teams to travel to and, and play in. I think they kind of ran into a buzzsaw today. Obviously, a ton of self-inflicted mistakes. But, man, this South Carolina team, I, last week, highly unimpressive offensively, dominant defensively. You saw the light start to flicker on here in the second half offensively. And with the way they defend and rush the passer, this team might be a problem for a lot of folks moving forward in the year. Now the offense has really benefited in both games from short fields. 
their first touchdown drive last week and their last were both on. Still third down. Takeaways by the defense inside the 10 yard line. They had to score with about six minutes to go to beat Old Dominion after the defense got them the ball back last week to set up the winning touchdown inside the 10. Sellers 11 out of 15 passing for 159, two TDs and one interception. And he's taken down for a loss back at the 35 yard line by Steven Souls, a true freshman. And the coaches yesterday said you might want to add Steven Souls to your spotting chart because he's been very impressive in practice and there's a good chance he's going to get into the game. And obviously he is. And continuing to find more and more of those guys. You know they're going to be great up the middle for sure. Deion Walker's going to continue to play at an all SEC, all American caliber level. JJ Weaver's got that potential as well. But finding someone on the other side can really make life a lot easier for those guys. That's what South Carolina's done. I mean, they got Kyle Kennard and you have on the other side Dylan Stewart. And now the interior guys get some one on one. So having another guy step up like Souls could be huge for Kentucky moving forward. Ty Kroger, they're well coached. They'll let the play clock go down. And the game clock under five minutes to go. Trying to pooch it, he got too much of it. 4.53 to go. South Carolina on its way to 2-0. SEC on ABC is presented by Burger King. You rule. The defense ruling for South Carolina today, Nick Eamon Worry with a pick six. Two great weeks back to back for that South Carolina D last week against Old Dominion. Four takeaways, kept giving the offense short fields, five sacks. Today, only four sacks, but Kentucky's only attempted 12 passes. They stopped trying, or that sack total would be a lot higher. Jason Patterson, the ball Jason carrier. Patterson, so where do we think South Carolina is, Greg, in year four now under Shane Beamer? And is this really feisty and talented defense good enough to make them a surprising contender in the conference. Well, I think contender feels like maybe a bridge too far, but I tell you what, I don't want to be a contender and see South Carolina on the schedule now. With those guys off the edge defensively, man, they are a handful. Now, it's about the offense. Can they kind of get up to speed and, and complement that defense? Because they're going to cause a lot of problems for teams in this league with how they can rush the passer and put a lot of pressure on that position. Patterson again. Yeah, I guess the questions for their offense is the offensive line better right. than it was before. Because last year they couldn't really run block at all. And they didn't have the running back you could tie the game plan to. Now they do in Sanders. They have that. And then is there somebody in the wide receiver group who can at least help a little bit replacing what they got from Xavier Leggett? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it for them, too. I mean, they have good speed and weapons on the perimeter, but who's that guy that's going to go and win that 50-50 ball? It, is it Nick Harbour? Because at this point, I don't know if it is, but can Jared Brown do that? Can Dre Jacobs do that? That's what they got to identify, are those guys that can win against big corners that are physical and could potentially knock them off the routes. Because it's not a very big core. It's a group that's more catch and run, and that might be something that'll be challenging as they move forward. Even the third string defensive tackles are putting pressure. That was big Montkel Goodwine, number 44, who was in pursuit of Wimsat, forced him to throw it. Here's a transfer from Alabama. Wimsat stayed on his feet, got very close to the first down marker. And he did get it with an 11 yard gain. South Carolina defense reminds me a little bit 
of the defense that Missouri had when they first joined the league. They ended up actually going to consecutive SEC championships because they had two bell cow defensive ends that were off the charts good. One Shane Ray, Michael Salmon, those guys just wrecked the game almost every single week for the opposing offense. And that's kind of how the South Carolina defense is structured. Really good up front with two guys that can completely take over. Which Clayton White certainly helps as well. He's in his fourth year as defensive coordinator. A lot of continuity within the system and a lot of veteran players who have been in that system. Wim sat two out of four passing now for seven yards. He's rushed five times for 48 yards. Sumo Karnbe has 70 yards. He actually has minus three rushing in the second half. Had several gainers taken away by penalties here in the second half. Fred Ferrier, the second on the catch. Three years at UAB and now here at Kentucky. No. Big test upcoming for South Carolina back in Columbia next Saturday. When LSU comes to town, to Williams Bryce for the first time since 2008. We're the 159 timeout. It's still a work in progress. Nagati in studio shocker in South Bend, the biggest upset of the season so far. Northern Illinois takes down number five, Notre Dame. A 62 yard field goal attempt is blocked in Northern Illinois. They win 16 to 14. They were 28 and a half point dogs. Sean, Greg, Molly, back to you. Mm. Well, another head scratching early season loss for Marcus Freeman and the Irish. Marshall went in there a couple of years ago. Marion Brown dropped by Kelvin Hunter. True freshman making his debut. Here's the college football rankings brought to you by Verbo. Yeah, goodbye Notre Dame from the top 10. Goodbye Michigan as well. And Very impressive win for Texas. Very, very impressive. They look great. I mean, and the game was more sideways than the final score would even indicate. Credit Reese Davis with that pick on game day. Said Texas would win and win big. Long throw intended for Willie Rodriguez, a freshman tight end. Down to 121 to go. Well, if it stays this way, it'll be the largest road win for South Carolina under Shane Beamer. His first season was 2021. With a 25 point margin right now. It'll be their third SEC road win in four seasons under Beamer. Here's another flag. And Wimsat is taken down. Another sack for this South Carolina defense with the subs on the field. Holding on the offense, number 69. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. Monkel Goodwine in on the sack. There's more college football action after our game tonight. And there's a good wine for Greg McElroy as well. 7.30, <laughs> Tennessee and NC State, both in the top 25 in the Dukes Mayo Classic from Charlotte, a neutral site game. It's really gonna be a fascinating matchup. Uh, I'm, I love the way NC State plays defense and I love the way Tennessee plays offense. <laughs> I can't, I mean, it's just gonna be awesome to see Tony Gibson and that defensive coordinator and that staff on NC State's defensive side against Josh Heupel on the offensive side. It's going to be an amazing cat and mouse game. And can you pronounce Nico's name for me again? Nico Iamaleava. Iamaleava. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> Willie Rodriguez could not make the catch. One minute to go. The celebration has already begun on the Gamecock sideline. Well, this looks familiar in the Beamer family. Of course, when Shane Beamer was a kid, he was on the sideline with his dad at Virginia Tech. That's his son, Hunter, enjoying the experience of victory on the road. And it doesn't get any easier with the schedule going forward. We talked about it earlier. If you're going to have a big year, these are the kind you have to win, and they're going to win this one convincingly. They go to Alabama, to Oklahoma. Ole Miss isn't bad. And, of course, next week will be a, another really good barometer now against an 
LSU team that's still in the top 20 even after the opening defeat. Yeah, and we're going to find it. We know LSU's got a great offensive line. That's been their strength for a couple years now, and we're going to find out just how good this pass rush is. So it's going to be a great test for them next week, but they get it in the friendly confines there at williams Bryce, and say what? You woke Ole Miss and Missouri up knowing that you got to travel up there as well later in the year. Feels like an important year for Shane Beamer. The first two were terrific, seven and six, and then an eight and five last year, a step back to five and seven. But year four off to an excellent start. As they go to two and oh, one and oh in the conference, and they make history. They are the first team to be in first place in the 16 team Southeastern Conference. They'll be in first place all by themselves, but this is the first and only SEC game of this week and this season so far. Here's Molly. Coach, you told us before the game this defense felt doubted and overlooked going into this one. What kind of statement did they make today with yet another dominant performance? An unbelievable statement by our defense, but an unbelievable statement about our entire program. You know, there was um, um, you know, there was a there was a perception out there about our team this week, but it wasn't reality. And we knew what we kind of team we have. There were some lazy narratives out there this week about this team. And uh, we got a bunch of tough, gritty young men, um, starting with our quarterback, offense, defense, special teams. Everybody did it today. And that's a team win. We got 74 players up here, but we got 120 guys on our, on our football team. And there's a bunch of guys in Columbia right now watching this on TV. And I want them to know that they are a huge part of this. The scout team, everybody involved with our program made a statement about what Gamecock football is about today. You mentioned Lenora Sellers with his first SEC road win. What kind of progress did you see from him and your offense week one to week two? We, can get, we got better, and the exciting thing is we can be so much better. You know, I mean, what a performance by our defense. We gave them three with the turnover. But, uh, you know, the offense made plays. We had a hell of a second half right there as well. Lenoris is gritty. He's going to continue to learn. We're going to continue to get better on offense, and that's the exciting thing. You know, I mean, it, this is a great team we just beat, but nobody came in. We expected this, you know, and that's no, nothing against Kentucky, but there was great confidence coming in here today not to – to keep it close and hope things work out, but there's great confidence on this football team and we showed it today. If your defense continues to dominate and your offense progresses the way that it should, what can this year's South Carolina team accomplish? I think we got all the ingredient, man, ingredients. So many of my, my dad's teams at Virginia Tech he had back in the day. Great defense, great special teams. Offense kind of will continue to get better as the year goes. But, I mean, we came up here, we started, I think, three true freshmen on offense today, a redshirt freshman quarterback. We got a defense, a veteran defense, that I think people have forgotten about going back to last year. Uh, we played pretty good defense down the stretch last year, and we started out this season with pretty good uh, defense. And, you know, it wasn't great last week against Old Dominion, but we got better as a team this week, and we'll continue to get better, and we need to be a lot better next Saturday at high noon against LSU, and we need williams Rice Stadium freaking rocking next Saturday at 12 noon. All right, thank you. Congratulations on the win, Coach. Thanks so much. Got his talking points in. <laughs> <laughs> his uh, daughters would like his attention now as well. Very impressive win for South Carolina. And they go to 2 0. Final score here in Lexington the Gamecocks 31, the Kentucky Wildcats 6. Now for our great crew, led by our producer Phil Dean, our director Scott Johnson. For Molly McGrath and Greg McElroy. Sean McDonough saying so long from Lexington, Kentucky.